Hello everyone, ChargeCoin here. You know, I've been thinking about how Deya and Candice have one of the coolest designs in game. Candice is literally modeled after an Egyptian warrior with a super cool shield. Deya also looks amazing with her gold and red motifs. However, the problem is that both Candice and Deya have very mediocre kits and are considered to be one of the worst characters in game, usually ranking very low in tier lists ever since their release in Sumeru. Candice's burst buffs normal attack elemental damage based on her HP. On paper, this is not bad, but it is quite restrictive as the buffs are only provided to normal attacks and a hydro infusion doesn't apply much hydro due to the ICD. Deya's pseudo shield also is kinda meh as it is usually limited to a circle, has a fairly high cooldown which will leave you unprotected and her skill deals a coordinated pyro damage at where the enemy is hit but doesn't deal that much damage and has quite a long interval. I believe that this has all changed with the release of Natlan and the character Moalani. If you didn't already know how Moalani works, she needs to use her skill and ride her shark to ram into enemies 3 times before unleashing her powerful normal attacks. Normally, this attack can deal good damage but you honestly need to cause the vaporized reaction if you really want Moalani to do that insane damage. That is where Deya can actually come in. She's the only character in the game right now that can apply Pyro effectively off field without needing her elemental burst, unlike Toma and Xiangling, who have high burst costs, which means that you can't really use their Pyro application as much as you would like. With Deya, Molani can trigger Vaporize more frequently and effectively. To make this Pyro application stay on enemies even longer, adding a Dendro character like Nahida or Emily can cause the burning reaction for more reliable Vaporize reactions. What's more, Molani's on fuel nature means that a shield is so important for her to further increase her resistance to interruption to deal more damage, which Deya can actually do. Personally, I use the Sacrificial Greatsword on Deya so that she can bypass the long cooldown on her elemental skill. Or if you have a C2 which increases the duration of a Sanctum field, then perhaps you can opt for using another weapon. Moving on, I mentioned that Moalani needs to vaporize to deal more damage. She also scales off HP so pairing her with another Hydro character is ideal to increase her HP via the Hydro Resonance. However, the best damage buffer in game, Furina, doesn't really work well with Moalani as Furina's salon members may end up stealing Moalani's vaporizers by removing the Pyro application. The two other options would hence be Yelan, a 5-star character, or Candice, a 4-star. Both Yelan and Candice can buff damage with their skill. Of course, Yelan's is more versatile as it buffs all types of damage while Candice's only buffs normal attacks. But Candice is definitely usable here if 1. You don't have Yelan or 2. You need Yelan on another team. So, overall, I'm using a team of Emily, Moalani, Candice and Deya. Finally, we can actually pair Candice and Deya together and the team is not too shabby at all, with the rotation of Emily using her elemental skill for dendro application, Candice using her burst for the damage buff, while Deya activates her field for shielding and pyro application. Moalani can then let loose within the field with her normal attacks. This is how it would look like. If you have made it this far, do consider leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't as it would really really help out this small channel to get to its next goal of 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much and see you soon! If you'd like to see which standard banner character is the most worth it to build, please click the video on the right. If you'd like to see my other Genshin Impact videos, please click the playlist on the left. Once again, thank you so much for watching 
and see you again next time. Bye-bye.